Unless we're building an application to manipulate just textual data, most of our applications we build are going to involve some aspect of mathematical operations. Now, the operations we'll do in this class um, are basic math operations. Subtraction, addition, multiplication, division, we'll do some exponentiation. Uh, we'll look at some different division-like operations, one of which is called modulus. Um, we might also use some functions, some math functions. We can do things like uh, cosine, arctangent, tangent, sine, those type of trigonometry calculations using the math library, as well as finding things like the ceiling of a number and the floor of a number as far as integers. And we'll do some square roots and exponentiation. But don't be concerned that coming into a programming class, you need to know calculus. Uh, we won't do any calculus stuff in this class. Um, really in any of our programming classes outside of those that are aimed at engineers such as our C++ computer science class. So we have what's called operators in programming languages that determine what the math problem is that we want to solve. And you're familiar with most of these. So I'm going to create two variables here, x is 7 and y is 2. And we can do math using just hard-coded numbers. But more popularly, we're going to use variables or maybe even constants. So my first one here is print x plus y. So we can do a mathematical operation inside of the parentheses as long as that whole thing is a math operation. So x plus y is going to be 7 plus 2. We should get 9. Then I have an x minus y. 7 minus 2 should give us 5. The multiplication operator in Python as well as pretty much every other language is the asterisk, shift 8. And so here we have x times y. 7 times 2 is going to give us 49. And then I have x divided by y. Now this is a standard division. So it's going to give us 7 divided by 2 or 3.5. But then a lot of times we want to be able to do integer division in our calculations. And in Python, the integer division is two slashes. So x divided by y, 7 divided by 2 as an integer division gives us 3. An integer division is always going to truncate the remainder. And it doesn't round it, it simply truncates it. Now this integer division is, is a different operator in other languages. In VB it's a backslash. In C Sharp and Java, as well as in Swift, it's going to determine what data type x and y are the two operands are. So in this case, um, if these were both, in the case of Java or C Sharp, if they're both integers, we get an integer division. Otherwise, we get a standard division. And so that's where you might have to cast one of these variables to an integer or to a float or to a, another type of data type, such as a double, to get it to do the correct type of division. We have something called a modulus operator. And in Python, that is a percent sign. And that's true in Java and Swift and C Sharp. Um, in VB, it's the word mod. So x modulus 2 is an integer division in which this is then going to give us the remainder. So we set up here that 7 integer division 2 gives us 3. Here, it's 7 mod 2 is 3 as far as the integer division, but what's left over is a remainder of 1. And that's what would print out here is 1. And then in Python, we have an exponentiation operator. So this would be 7 raised to the power of 2. And that's a double asterisk. In VB, it's a caret character, a shift 6. In C Sharp and Java, uh, it's going to be a math function called pow. And, and the math pow function is also valid here in Python. We'll look at that a little bit later. So if you want to do the square root, the square root is nothing more than taking a number to the power of 1 half. So 100 exponentiation 0 0.5 is a square root of 100. Let's run this and see what we get. And so x plus y, 7 plus 2 is 9, 7 minus 2 is 5, 7 times 2 is 14. 7 divided by 2 is 3.5. 7, 7 integer division 2 is 3. The modulus operator of 7 modulus 2 is a remainder of 1. 
Here we have 7 raised to the power of 2, that's 49, and then finally the square root of 100 is 10. Now you notice that this is returning a floating point value, so we get 10.0. I mentioned that we can have more mathematical functions available to us through the math library. In order to access that math library, we have to use what's called a directive. So in Python, the directive starts with the word import in the name of the library. So here we're going to import math. Now normally I would take this line of code, import math, and put it up here at the top. I like to do my directives at the very beginning. Uh, it could even come before all of the comments here. But normally you'll see a bunch of directives at the beginning of an application. And that makes all of the methods and constants as part of that library available to us. So by importing math, I have access to a whole bunch of other methods. And I mentioned we can do trigonometry applications here, such as the cosine of x, the sine of x, the tangent of x, the arc tangent, the arc cosine, the arc sine. We also have a ceiling and a floor method, which will return the integer right above the number for ceiling or right below the number for floor. So for example, 4.5, the floor would be 4 and the ceiling would be, would be 5. We also have a constant here of math.pi. So here's how we use those methods. I'm going to do this in a print statement again. I have to specify the library, math. Dot, and then here I have a method called sqrt for square root. I'm going to pass it 100. That's the same thing we did up here of 100 raised to the power of a half. It should give us a value of 10. And just as we did x raised to the power of y, or 7 raised to the power of 2, gave us 49, I can do the same thing with the POW method of the math library, where we take the first number is our base number, and the y is the second number, which is y here, is the exponent. So again, we should get 7 raised to the power 2, or 49. I'm going to save this and run it. And here's where those last two lines are coming in. So the math square root 100, the value is 10, and then x raised to the power of y through the POW method is 49. Let's take a look at the ceiling and the floor. I'm going to print a string of 20 asterisk, and then let's just do a print math dot ceiling and we'll say uh, 17.62 and then we'll do the same thing for the floor and once again I'm going to save and run the ceiling of 17.62 is 18 and the floor of 17.62 is 17. So the ceiling is the integer above that number, and the floor is the integer below that number. If we did this just as a number itself, or an integer, let's say 17 and 17, save and run, notice the floor and the ceiling are the same here, it's the number itself. The ceiling we're rounding up to the nearest integer, and in floor we're basically rounding down. And since these are integers, they round to each other. We had another variable of z equals 5, and found in the variable says abc equals x plus z times 2, so times y. So x was 7, z is 5, y is 2. And if I were to print that, what do you think the value of ABC would be? Again, we have 7 plus 5 times 2. And some of you may be thinking 24. And some of you may be thinking 17. Let's run it and see what we get. So we get 17. Now if I change this a little bit more and I say I'm going to put x plus z in parentheses, 
and run it. Now we get 24. And the reason being, operations inside of parentheses take precedence over the other operations. So here's our order of precedence. Anything inside parentheses is done first. It's the innermost parentheses moving out to the outermost parentheses. Then we have exponentiation will take occurrence or take precedence before anything else. And then multiplication, division, integer division, and modulus are all at the same level and does those from left to right. And once it's done those operations, then it does any addition and subtraction. So that's our order of precedence. I'll give you another example here. Let's just say ABC equals So I have 3 times 5 plus 7 times 3 minus 1 times 2. And then we'll print ABC. And it indented because I have a mistake here, and that is I need another parenthesis. So sometimes things will indent on you. It's an indication that there's something wrong in the line above. So let's take a look at this. It's going to do the innermost parentheses first. 3 minus 1 is 2. There's no, no exponentiation, but so the next one would be division, the next would be multiplication, division, inner division, and modulus, but we have another set of parentheses, parentheses here. So while this ends up becoming coming 2, we now have a 2 times 2 inside of parentheses, that becomes 4. So I do the 3 times 5 next, which is 15, and then the 7 times 4, which is 28 and add those together and we should get 43. Let's check it out. And that's exactly what we get. So that's a basic introduction into doing math in Python. We'll be doing a lot more math in our programming along the way as you progress through this course.